I mean, this, this, this referendum is completely <coughs> different from what we had during the general election, which was then you had lots of different political parties going around trying to persuade you to vote for them. This is much, this is much more about um, making sure that people are given the information to make an intelligent decision, um, not intelligent decision, but kind of an informed decision when they go and, and vote and whether they even bother to go and vote. Um, and one of the really big problems, certainly here, but in lots of other parts of the country, has been that people feel that it's an important vote, they, know, they think it's important, but most people don't really feel that they understand what it's about. Who feels that they're in that category? They, that they feel it's important, but they don't feel that they've got enough information to make an informed decision about it. And does that worry you a bit? Yeah. Um, and, and I think one of the really big problems is when you look at the TV or you read in the papers or anything, all you see is those people who are passionately for shouting at the people who are passionately against. They chuck a load of statistics at each other, which are often completely contradicting. And you kind of think, but who do I believe? <laughs> um, so, um, I, I'm not going to tell you uh, what I think, whether, whether I think we should stay in or stay out, because I don't think that's of any relevance whatsoever, because my vote counts as much as your vote in this. And I've got my own views about it. Um, but I'm half German. I was born and raised in, in Berlin. Um, and I came to England when I was 10 years old. So I actually can see it from two different perspectives. Um, I can see it sort of from a British perspective, but I can also see it from a, from a German perspective. And that's quite important because the, whether Britain stays inside the EU or whether it leaves is not just something that affects us, it also affects the rest of the European Union. And if you look at what's happening in the EU at the moment, where you've got lots and lots of migrants coming into Greece and Germany, um, and you know where those migrants are going, and you look at the migrants in Calais who are trying to get into the UK, um, actually, whether we are members of the EU or not, does have a really big impact on that. Um, and that's one of the really big issues about, um, Mr. Leach was saying about the East Coast, and that it's the coastal towns that vote, uh, that are very Eurosceptic who want to come out. And that's because they're very, very poor areas, and they've got the highest number of Eastern European migrants live there. And so that this is a direct, uh, so if you've got, um, you know Shirebrook, Sports Direct, um, I don't know whether any of you live around there, but um, you know, one of the really big issues, if you go to Shirebrook, then the people who are from Shirebrook tend to be quite Eurosceptic. They, they tend to want to vote to come out because of the huge number of Polish people who've come in. I mean, right or wrong, it's just that it's been a huge number of people who've suddenly arrived. And, uh, you know, the big, the big employer at Sports Direct employs generally Polish people, um, and people are quite resentful of that. And that's exactly what happens on, on these sort of coastal areas. Whereas London, the reason why even poorer parts of London are very pro the EU is because they're much closer to the European Union, and a lot of the companies that they work for and the businesses that they work for trade with the EU. So if you've got a business that exclusively trades with the European Union, um, you'd be mad to vote to come out. Um, so really it matters, it, what it comes down to is what matters to you. And the other thing is that a lot of younger people that I speak to, what matters to them is that they can have cheap holidays in, in Europe. And I know that sounds a bit frivolous, but actually that matters. And that's, that, you know, if you, if you go on holiday to the EU um, and you get cheap flights, if we, are, if we come out of the EU, the cost of the flights will rise and you'll have to apply for a visa every single time you go to a European country even for a holiday. So, the, I mean, these things matter. Um, so it, it, it really depends on, on, on what part of the argument that matters to you. I'm surprised that uh, North East Derbyshire, because for a lot of people, even though North East Derbyshire doesn't have generally very much immigration, we're one of the one of the constitute one of the areas in the country where we've got the least number of people moving in and moving out. Um, but in spite of that, when you talk to people, one of their top concerns is about immigration. Um, and it's the immigration that they see on their TV screens rather than the immigration that they feel themselves. Um, and people feel rightly or wrongly that actually being part of the European Union has meant that actually a lot of the decisions are taken in Brussels by people that we don't have any direct control over rather than decisions being made by our local councils or by our, our local parliaments that we can influence. So that's something else that people feel very, very strongly about. That you know, if we, if, we, if we want to make the laws that we live by, we don't want to have those laws imposed on us by, by the EU. Those people who are really for the EU say, 
that if we want to have a trading block, so as a, the, the, which is what the EU started out as, it started off as a as a as a trading community. That if we want to be part of a trading community, we've got to have rules and regulations that form part of that trading community. And uh, which way do you think you're going to you're, you're voting? Staying on? in. Staying in. And why? I've and always been fond of European countries, and actually in the summer I'm going on holiday to Germany to come work. And I, 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 I actually I know a few Germans. I'm, I'm great friends with a couple of them. Very nice and, people, and I don't want to have to spend all the money on a visa just to go see them. It seems like a lot of fat. Also, the free trade that we get from Europe, I also quite like a lot of European food. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to have to pay more for my nice meat selection and nice cheeses. <laughs> anybody else? Here? Is there anybody here who is for coming out of the EU? Well, I just think can you've got all this, you know, Boris Johnson saying we'll have an economic dip, then it'll go up, and the budget being pro Europe, and I just think no matter what's going to happen to the economy, can you put a price on democracy? Because Brussels takes more and more powers from our left, well, our parliament, and we already say Britain is too centralised, so why should we centralise Europe even more? I think that's a. That, that's, that's the biggest reason why people vote to come out, and it's that it's partly also a feeling of generally, not just with Europe and Parliament, but generally feeling that you don't have any say over what happens to things that that affect your life. And I think partly that's why I'm so annoyed that we didn't lower the voting age to 16 for the EU referendum. This is a once in a lifetime thing. Um, it's not like you have an election every five years, so you don't vote this time; you vote in five years' time. Um, this is once in a lifetime, and I think you know it would have been it would have been much better to include people who are who are 16 just from that perspective of you know influencing a decision that really is going to affect your life in, in the long term. And that, that is that is the main argument that that um, people who vote to come out. I miss out by three months. You miss out by three months. Oh, I mean that's just classic. Can I ask your thoughts on? Whichever way the vote goes on, on the EU, EU referendum, what would you say to people on the losing side? So, for example, we've got people in Westminster, Camden, Hackney, Islington, Central London, very, very pro EU and staying in. And then you've got people, places like Kingsley, uh, Great Yarmouth, uh, Portsmouth, places on the coast, completely the opposite view. One side is going to win against the other. What, what would you say? It's a really, it's a really important thing. question because um, I mean, if you look at Scotland and they have their independent <coughs> referendum up there, the fact of having the referendum <coughs> made such enormous, awful divisions, even within families in Scotland, that still, still haven't been healed. And somehow, even though the Scottish referendum, they voted quite strongly actually to stay in the Euro uh, inside the UK, um, that issue will never go away now, not until Scotland is independent. And actually, your question is much more relevant to Scotland because the votes get counted by council area. So we can see by count, we can see where the North East Derbyshire council area voted to stay in or come out. So if England, which makes up 90% of the of the UK, I mean England has got the vast amount of a majority of the population, votes to stay to come out. But Scotland, which has got about 8% of the UK population, votes to very strongly votes to stay in, which it will. And actually, you know, why are we, why are we able as a country to impose our will on Scotland, which is another country? So actually, the result of that would be, if that's what happens, they will have another referendum and they will go independent and they will then join the EU as as just Scotland. I think. I mean, I, my feeling is that the UK will vote to quite a, you know, probably about sort of 10, 20 points to stay in the EU, mainly because people get to that kind of, they get to the final point and they go, I don't know what it looked, I don't know what will happen if we vote to come out. I know what it's like to be in, and it's fine, it's not so bad, and I just don't know what happens if we vote to come out. And that's, that's generally, and that's what they call project fear. So the people who are campaigning to stay in are trying to make people afraid of the sort of the unknown. Um, and, uh, and that's what won in Scotland, actually. Most people, at the end, voted to stay in the UK because they really were uncertain about what would happen to the pound, what would happen you know, to oil, what would, you know, all of these things, they were very uncertain about it. So I think we will vote to stay in. 
But I think also, I mean, if you look at the Conservative Party, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Conservative, but if you look at the Conservative Party, um, and because they are the party of government, um, it's, it, 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 it's much more important what's happening with them, but they have got rifts now within their own party that are really damaging. And how they are going to deal with, uh, you know, healing those rifts um, after the referendum has happened is going to be is going to be very important because that's exactly what's going to happen in the country where where people do feel very very strongly about it. Um, you know, if you're passionately for, passionately against, people say that there's a third of the country is passionately for, a third of the country is passionately against, and a third of the country just doesn't really doesn't know.